this committee meeting is, is in order. Good afternoon. I'm Council Member Peter Ku, and I'm pleased to chair the Committee on Parks and Recreation. Today, the committee will be voting on proposed introduction 906-A, sponsored by Council Member Idanis Rodriguez. This bill will transfer jurisdiction over Hart Island from the Department of Corrections to the Parks Department. Jurisdictions to the, uh, to the Parks Department will transfer no later than July 1st, 2021, and possibly even earlier if the city begins using other locations for the purpose of conduct conducting public burials. The committee recently considered the legislation at a hearing on May 30th, 2019 that focused on issues related to Hart Island, where the administration and many advocates agree that a transfer of jurisdiction from, D from DOC to parks is a sensible idea. I will be voting in favor of this le uh, legislation and urge all my colleagues to support this legislation as well. Uh, thank you. And today, yeah, we're going to ask um, the prime sponsor of this bill, Yudanus, uh, uh, to speak. Thank you, Chair, and all members of this committee of park, and to all my colleagues, and as I said before, to Speaker Johnson and Melinda, you know, all respect to you and all the members of the Heart Island Foundation and and everyone that you have been able to help okay. to find a loved one a, a, a bury in the largest public cemetery in the United States of America. Uh, so today, this is about justice. This is about dignity. This is about respect. This is about changing the way or how people had to go through all those process after 2014 because it took a lawsuit for the city of New York to allow a family members or loved one or, or visitor to go in and spend some time in the largest public cemetery. Uh, and after the lawsuit, even today, it takes like two months for anyone to be able to get a spot to go and visit the island. And if you are not a family member, you're only allowed to walk to the chapel, like chapel, like, you know, like a 200 feet, and you cannot move from there. But yes, going there and listening to the names that they have there, you can see who are those people? Who are the one million body buried in the island? They are immigrants, they are the poorest, they are, they are the blacks who, after segregation was over, I'm sorry, after the Civil War, you know, many white people refused to be buried together with black individuals. And they were sent to be buried in that location. The island also was used for missile. The island has been used for many things that probably we don't even know. And that's why it has been a shame that we are leaving behind that the most progressive city in the whole nation has been stopped New Yorkers and visitors to go and give the, give the dignity and respect. I'm Catholic and as someone of faith, as many people have different belief, we know that after someone die, you go once in a while, visit a friend, visit a, the location of the low one where they are buried. We have been denying the rights, and we have not been fighting it strong enough as a progressive city. So that's why for me, you know, this is a historical day. As a social study teacher that I had been for, that I was for 13 years, this is teaching learning history. This is about opening a space. This is about demanding that the city of New York will make that place as a de the museum of the deaf where well, we should be learning for of hundred years of history. They are the immigrants, they are the black, they are the individual who died during the HIV, and we 
thought that we will be infected if they will be close to us and we bury them together. And that's why when I went with the speaker and he came back, and I know that they, not only the chairman of this committee now, but the former chairman also, you know, he worked so hard for this bill. So today is a day of Elizabeth Crowley who worked so hard when she used to be the chairman of the, of the Fire and Criminal Justice Committee. This is the day of the speaker. This is the day of all New Yorkers who say enough is enough. Most of the cemetery in this public cemetery, they are on the park in our nation. Probably this is like, this is like one of the last ones. And I would like to thank the chairman of this committee, the members of this committee, y para mí es un día histórico donde nosotros estamos diciendo que vamos a hacer historia transfiriendo el control del cementerio público más grande de la nación, donde están cuerpos de personas pobres, inmigrantes, personas que murieron durante la época del HIV, de que se lo vamos a abrir. Look at the schedule how often a boat leaves from South Ferry to Governor's Island. There's different time a day. We need to establish the same schedule. We need to open that site. And that's what we brought in today. And because of that, I'd like to say thank you, Chair, and thank you to all members of this committee. Thank you, uh, Council Member Rodriguez. Any members on this committee want to speak on this bill? Oh, no. When you vote, okay. Yeah. So, will council uh, call the bill? William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on parks and recreation, introduction 906A, Chair Ku. I will aye. Cohen. Aye. Levine. Permission to explain my vote briefly. Yes. Yeah. This has really been a momentous 24 hours. For those of us who care about the future of Heart Island, this is the third committee since yesterday to vote out a package of bills that are going to transform, transform the way New York City buries and cares for those who are marginalized in life. Um, we've passed bills that will change the transportation to the island, that will change the burial process, that will ensure public input, but the foundation of what many of us consider the injustice of Heart Island is the fact that for generations it has been managed by the Department of Corrections. That's a shocking thing for many New Yorkers even to grapple with. It is inmates paid, I think, less than a dollar an hour who are burying these mass graves. And that has required the entire island to become a secure facility that the public cannot visit, that even loved ones can only visit under scheduled armed escort. This is the treatment for people who have family buried on Heart Island. And that will never be changed as long as it is, as it is a Department of Corrections facility. So this bill today to transfer jurisdiction where it belongs to the Parks Department is the linchpin of our effort to convert this island into a open, dignified, green cemetery that the public can visit and that people with loved ones buried there can visit. The Parks Department manages Prospect Park, which has an active cemetery. Prospect, uh, the Parks Department manages Washington Square Park, which has a defunct cemetery that was discovered in excavations there. Many of our parks have bodies buried from past eras. Uh, this is no different, and this is going to open up the possibility of a new era on Heart Island. I'm incredibly proud of this. Uh, she's been acknowledged a lot. And she deserves one final shout out from me, Melinda Hunt, an activist who for years was a voice in the wilderness and forced the city to grapple with this. Uh, this is a great victory. We're not going to do what council members usually do and celebrate and walk away. This now begins what will be a years long process of capital renovation, uh, a new transportation network, of changing burial policies. There are going to be a lot of contentious issues here that we are going to continue to litigate and fight for as advocates, um, but today is definitely a day to celebrate um, a tremendous victory, a hard-fought victory, and so I will proudly be voting aye. Rivera. I vote aye. Adams. 
as a proud sponsor, co-sponsor of this legislation, I'm incredibly proud of this moment. I'm, incre I'm incredibly proud of the Transportation Committee and of the Parks and Recreation Committee. This legislation is the beginning of restoration of dignity and hope to numerous families that should have never been put in this horribly compromised position in the first place. I am so very proud to vote aye. Ulrich. I vote aye. Brennan. I vote aye. A vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Item has been adopted by the committee. <clears throat> the committee will open uh, for another 15 minutes for council members to vote. Yeah. 